Good morning, everyone. Today's video is going to focus on social media at Southeast Community College, and we have a friend with us, Jennifer Snyder. Her official title, I believe, is Social Media, what am I missing? Writing Specialist. And Marketing. Marketing Specialist. Mm -hmm. So Jen, Jennifer is going to tell us about some of the various ways we recruit students with social media, some of the other things we do with social media, and she's quite the expert at several different types of social media. So Jennifer, I'll turn it over to you and you tell us about social media at the college. All right, well, thanks for having me as one of your uh, guests on your Zoom chats. Um, first off, uh, the college does uh, have social media channels of Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Um, we also have a Snapchat account. And um, one thing that, um, before we left for the coronavirus um, camp, before we left campus, uh, I worked with the admissions recruiters to see how they could stay connected to um, prospective students. And so they um, basically have taken over our Instagram account and have been posting content on there. And it's really been um, great to see all the fun things that they're doing on there. Um, so if you are a, a a prospective student who wants to stay connected with the college, I recommend you go on to our Instagram account because all of the recruiters have access to it and they've been answering questions. And like yesterday, they did their Instagram story showing their new coworkers, which are all of their pets. So that was kind of fun to see the, their pets and stuff. So um, it's a great way to stay connected. Um, I also know that our student life um, on all the campuses also have been utilizing Facebook and Instagram as well um, during this time to stay connected with students and to let them know ways they can still be active on campus without actually being on a campus. So those are just some of the ways um, that we're staying active on social media. So I think one of the wonderful things, sometimes when you have adversity, it really gives you an opportunity to be creative and innovative. And I think, with, uh, I think you've been here for Two or three. Four years, four years. Four years, my goodness. <laughs> it's well, gone fast. It has gone fast. I think that it was very fortunate that prior to, to you, uh, we didn't really have any social media personnel. So I think it's been good at a time when we're really trying to figure out ways to stay connected. I think having your expertise um, and uh, leadership in this area has been really nice. So we appreciate that, Jennifer. What? Thank you. What about you personally, um, how have you navigated this switch to a virtual environment or has it been much of a switch since you were sort of already focused on social media, obviously? Well, uh, one thing with social media is that um, it doesn't shut off at 5 p.m. and it doesn't turn on at 8 a.m. It, it's on 24 seven. So I have, for the last four years um, with the college, I've been um, active on social media like after I leave the office because people can still contact us um, via social media. Um, I get a ton of um, messages with Facebook Messenger. Um, if people just have general questions like, hey, how do I send my application in or who should I call about my uh, bill that I have. So I, I've been answering those questions for the last four years anyway, but now with um, the, the situation we're in now, I think I'm getting more of those type of questions because they just don't know where to go on campus. So it really hasn't changed that much for me as far as um, how much I'm doing after work hours. So. So Jennifer, I have, I have a kind of a comment, maybe a question for you. We have this goal in our existing strategic plan called Goal 9, and it talks about creating a very positive, reflective, transparent, respectful, and compassionate uh, culture at Southeast Community College. And we're using that goal to also help our students become more resilient. We have a new initiative that we're working with the students on as they come into the college. But one of the things that's really important about Goal 9 is there's the word reflection. And we specifically define that word to uh, mean the, that you pause and think about your thoughts, your emotions before you act. And I, th I think of social media as a tool that often makes it really easy to react before you really think about 
what you're feeling, uh, what your emotions are, and maybe about the cause of those emotions, and maybe we can reflect a little bit about and act on those causes instead of the actual emotion itself. So I think social media sometimes gets a, a bit of a, it, it gets criticized, I think, because of that tendency for, for individuals to want to react instead of reflecting. But I also think you can flip it around and use it as a tool to actually help you reflect because you have lots of opportunities often to um, challenge yourself to say, wow, someone said that. Let me see if I can understand the emotion that's caused and let me see if I can reflect rather than reacting. So almost like a practice tool. What do you think about that? Uh, that is very true um, because people right now, they're, um, they're just stressed a lot more, I think, just about everything that's going on in the world. And so one thing that I try to do um, when I get these messages is I try to, I take it as that I have to listen to what they're saying before I actually answer them. Sometimes I might wait a little bit before I actually hit the send button just to make sure I'm saying the right thing and doing the right tone. Um, because I found that, you know, people appreciate it when they know that it's actually a person that's answering them. It's not just a canned response. Um, and so that's so true that you do have to go back. And I try to look at it as if I was the person that just sent the message, what would I want to hear? And how can I say it in a way that does not upset them further? So. And, and I think sometimes when, if someone sends what appears to be kind of an aggressive posting or comment, it, you can reframe that. And it's, it's probably because they're frustrated. Um, maybe they have some anxiety with the current situation. And maybe what they're really saying, uh, the way you can choose to interpret it, as they're reaching out and they're saying, I'm struggling with my emotions right now. I need some help. Uh, can you help me? Um, I, I think there's a way to reframe sometimes what appears to be maybe aggression, what maybe what it really is, is just frustration and anxiety about the current situation or their current circumstances. So I think that's really important as a social media person. It sounds like you do a great job of that. And I appreciate that. What else do you have for us, Jennifer? Any, we got to get these views up on my video. So do you have any um, entertaining thoughts that will um, increase my viewership? Well, I think maybe what we need to do is uh, just have uh, some tweets and posts about your videos that uh, are appropriate with what the topic is so that people will start watching them more. I'm a little disappointed in that response, Jennifer. I thought you were going to tell me you need to just have puppies every <laughs> day, have different type, a different type of puppy. Well, a puppy would help. And I know you've got one, so, well, or a dog. He's a, he was a puppy, but now he's almost three. Uh, but that's a good idea. I yeah. Bring him in at, on one of these videos. Show, you, show your new coworker. Oh, okay. Uh, your, op your office assistant, your new dog. Your dog is your I, office assistant. Absolutely. Yeah, he's, he needs to do a little more to earn his keep. That's for sure. I think we're about uh, ready to wrap this up. Anything else you want to say to the college about social media before we end the video? Well, I do think that like right now, we I've taken this as an opportunity to show all the good things that we're doing because people right now need something um, positive. Um, and so like um, when we donated the mask and um, PPE to the hospitals, we know we had, a, that probably had about 15,000 views on that story alone. Um, the other one is like the um, uh, course that's delivering meals to people that need meals. Like, so I, I think just telling the good news of the college and letting people know um, that we're here to help, that's, that's always a good thing to do. And I think right now that's important to do. No, I think that's a really, we're not trying to um, advertise these things and talk about these things because we want some sort of credit, but what we want to do is inspire, you know, mm -hmm. um, make people feel good during this time. So if, if having a story about, you know, the Culinary Institute, we've got wonderful faculty chefs that are creating, I think, 100 meals a day. We're delivering them. Um, right. A number of different staff members have volunteered and they're on a list and they're delivering. And we've got a number of other, we're making uh, continuing education videos that we're going to offer free to the public. 
um, these are things that I think the more people know about it, the, you know, it'll inspire them and maybe they'll right. go down it and try to do something. Um, we're excited about that. I appreciate yep. you bringing that up. Anything yep. else? I think that'll do it. And I think uh, people need to also follow you on Twitter. Okay. Good. You know. Good plug there. Yep. You. Yep. You're welcome. All right. Well, we appreciate you uh, taking a little bit of time with us. You've been great. All right. And go do your social media thing. All right. I will. Okay. All right. Thank you. You're See welcome. You later. Bye. All right, everybody. Have a good rest of your morning.